Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're checking out Night Runner. This is not an LD25 game, so this is the first one that we've done in about a week or so that is just a regular old game. Well, this is not just a regular or an old game, in fact. Uh, this one is actually a new preview of a game that is yet to come out on iOS and Android, and we're fortunate enough to try out the web player version of it, uh, meaning that this is free to play in your browser. And I do want to clarify a couple things, because I've had... I don't want to say countless, but like, a lot of iOS games submitted via my contact form, and I'm extremely grateful for that, and in fact, anyone who wants to contact me about any game, regardless of whether or not I can cover it, I'm totally willing to talk to you. Uh, but the thing is, I don't really have a way to, you know, record iOS games, so I'm doing my best with that. But the trick and the way around that is, if you're going to contact me about your iOS game for a possible review or video, uh, send me a web player version like this developer did. Uh, this actually is a pretty cool looking game, and I probably wouldn't have known about it had they not contacted me. So, you know, we're both helping each other out here. Yes, I'm making a video, but I also am happy to check out a new game. And although I have an iPhone, um, I don't play a lot of games on it, believe it or not. Uh, the couple that I do play, it's like kind of the mainstream stuff that most people know about. Um, I also really like this one called uh, Berserk Ball, but that's kind of besides the point. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight on that, so if you're a developer out there and you want to send me an iOS game, please send me something I can record on PC, and I'm happy to check it out. Uh, and uh, this kind of game especially, so this is a, like a platformer-style runner kind of game, um, it actually lends itself very well to a video, generally. Uh, it's got a neat art style, it's got some great music actually from the title screen here, and these games tend to be very um, addictive. And I have nothing against those shorter, more casual experiences, I just like to do them in small bursts, and I like to do them in a controlled environment in sort of a way that I know what I'm getting into here. So, let's find out how to play some Night Runner. Okay, looks like a lot of stuff to learn here. Help Sir Edgar destroy his enemies and collect riches by jumping to avoid danger. Alright, we can do that. We've got some hearts. Starting with three hearts, every death takes one away. Dying with no hearts ends the game. Gems, 50, 250, and 5,000 points. Ooh, that 5,000 point gem looks pretty crazy awesome. Alright, power-ups, we've got gold, pink, and like salmon-colored and white feathers. So flight, double jump, and turbo. And we get chain bonuses. So we want to make sure that we approach all of the enemies from their proper angle. Bowmen, we want to hit straight on. Spearmen and skeletons, since they have a sword, we want to go from above. That makes sense. I can get into that. So uh, this is one of those high score based games, we're going to try and get the highest score possible, maybe get some achievements and such, and see if we can compete on the leaderboards. Let's try it out. I don't actually know how to control this yet, this is the first time I booted it up. Um, so what, just click? Okay, I can just click. So we're going to start out simple, the longer you hold the click, the higher you jump. Seems to make sense to me. Oh, okay, I wanted to actually... yeah. <laughs> That's not how we do it. I wanted to, uh, fall on that guy. It's gonna take me a second to get the correct feeling here. Alright, that guy plow through. Oh, oh, I meant to not land on top of that thing. Alright, jump back up. Fall on him. Get the gem. Little jump. Get the gem. Little jump. Stay on the ground. Hit, hit. I wish there was a little bit more of an impact feeling when you went through the guys. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with it, but it would be nice if there was like a staggered kind of like a ka-chunk every time. So you feel like there's more being done. Oh, see, it's it's tricky having <laughs> foreground and background platforms. I was kind of thinking it was just going to be one-dimensional. Uh, but I could see this being pretty addictive, actually. Let's try that again. I unlock the novice achievement. The, the achievements in these types of games really do drive gameplay forward a lot of the time, in my experience. Uh, without that, I think the, the entire affair would be a little bit more shallow. I mean, not that it, it's not the most complex thing in the first place, but that does add an extra level to make it much more addictive. Okay, some of these, you just gotta land on a, a falling jump for them to even be possible. And some of these gems might simply not be possible. Alright, I'm doing better now. It's amazing how quickly you can learn in one game, right? Alright, little jump, grab that. Oh yeah, alright, we're starting to get somewhere. I'm gonna just, like, pass up the- oh jeez. The ones where uh, it looked like I was just doomed, I'm not even gonna bother with those. 
Alright, little jump. Fall on him, and we'll get some combos going again. Let's plow right through him. Thankfully, there's not much, like, too many more enemy types, because if there was, like, an attack button, it would end up, like, Bit Trip Runner, and it would get kind of confusing all of a sudden. Alright, little jump. Little, little. I feel like a little bit like I'm playing Guitar Hero, and I'm, like, lining up where my fingers need to be as we go forward, even though all I'm doing is clicking and not clicking. Jump and tap and hold. Okay. We can try that. It's uh, a little tricky. Occasionally you'll notice the frame rate is dipping. Uh, I think that's just because I'm recording. I don't imagine this is the most particularly taxing game. I guess my flight just gave out in the middle there. I unlocked the Master Achievement already on my second playthrough. That's a little crazy, isn't it? Still got one more heart to go. It's getting to be night out. I really do like these little effects and everything. Speed increased over time. That could be ending up to be my uh, enemy. Oh, okay, that hit me. Crap. Does that mean I'm dead? I think it does. Oh, I get one more at the end. Okay. There's like these nice little firefly effects going on, and... Yeah, everything seems well animated enough. I mean, it's not crazy nice looking, but it's not bad either. Alright, so that was that. 2170 feet. Yeah, that's decent for a second playthrough, right? 23 kills, 65 gems, and a pretty good score, if I do say so myself. Let's try that one more time. Leroy Jenkins, at least I still got some chicken. That's not exactly the quote. These types of game- wow, I already got hit. Jeez, I jumped right into that arrow. I almost feel like I want to start over now. Can I do that? Yeah, I can. Let's just restart. I feel like these types of games would really benefit a little bit from having multiple difficulty, like, and not just by, like, saying easy, medium, hard, but, like, having three different courses. And I know courses, we're using that term loosely here since these seem to be randomly generated to some extent, but just increasing the probability of the difficult enemies or even changing up gameplay conventions a little bit, so maybe if you're playing on the expert course, uh, the majority of the ground is simply gone, and you have to use the flight feather to get through it, or stuff like that. Uh, also, just having various graphical aesthetics really helps a lot. Uh, there's this game, this iOS game that I played quite a bit, called Tiny Wings, uh, and one of the things that really makes that game... Oh, see, that was a tricky spot right there, I needed to stay up in the air. One of the things that keeps that game feeling fresh is every single time it's got this huge, uh, like, directory of different textures to pick from, and sort of like what it does with worms when it makes worms levels, it mixes and matches a bunch of elements like uh, the stroke on a hill, and then the color scheme on a hill, and then the foliage that you'll find on it, and all of that looks different each time. Uh, when you mix that up with all the different various, like, hill types, you end up with a very versatile looking game. Alright, tap and hold. This time I gotta pay attention to when my flight's gonna run out. Now what happens if I pick up one of the other feathers while I'm also doing that? One, alright. Uh, and I got hit exactly as it ended, so that's that, I suppose. Clay Pigeon! So when you get to, or if you choose to play this one, if you choose to follow the link to the uh, browser version, you're gonna find there's a pretty large list of different achievements to get. And the completionist in me is absolutely a glutton for punishment for that kind of thing. And that will probably be keeping me coming back for a bit. Because I can see this... Wow, how did... <laughs> how was I that bad at that? I need to restart again, sorry. It may not do it for everybody, and even though I know in the larger scheme of things, it's not like Xbox Live, and I used to be pretty big on trying to get achievements on Xbox Live, but I've since given up. I think I topped out somewhere around like 47,000 gamer score, and I just kind of don't care anymore about that. But in stuff like this, you know, this is Game Jolt where this is located. I mean, your achievement matters nothing, your, your score, I mean. So it's not like I'm trying to impress people, it's not like I'm trying to, you know, lengthen my EP, and as they say. Oh, see, that was a bad move there. Uh, it's just about your personal sense of completionism, trying to get through, you know, tick off all the boxes, so to speak. And when you see all the boxes, you're going to go, hey, I want to tick some of those off. Well, if you're like me, anyway. 
and there's no requirement that you be like me. Um, I also do quite enjoy one. We're working towards uh, getting a number to be bigger. I know that's like the primal Space Invaders Pac-Man-like urge that we need to increase our high score, but when there's a leaderboard, it definitely does bring out the competition, uh, the competitiveness in me. If you'll know uh, from me playing Super Hexagon for a little bit, I was getting pretty excited by that one. I'd like to see little uh, tweaks to this, like if your knight could level up or something, uh, if maybe you could clear it, like if these were stage-based, and as you clear it, you put like a couple skill points or whatever into your knight, make it a little bit more like an RPG system, and stuff like maybe his sword gets longer, or his jumping ability changes. I mean, this could maybe even be se like sequel ideas or whatever, this doesn't have to be for this, but just sort of brainstorming where my mind wants to go with this one. I could also see that it would make sense for there to be a, uh, yeah, I accidentally right-clicked there for some reason. Uh, I could see that there would be, like, a accelerate-decelerate option if you want to make things complicated, or maybe, in general, the knight is always accelerating, but you can right-click to slow him down for a moment, and you can use that to better space your jumps, you know, just as another idea. But really, I have very little to complain about, and I could easily see this being the type of game that I could play uh, for quite a few minutes at a time on iOS if I ended up picking this one up for my phone. So yeah, I, I would say so far I have no problem recommending this one. Ah, oh, see, I jumped again, it didn't work. You just gotta know what you're getting into, and this is not a particularly deep or complex game, but for what it is, I think it does the job fairly well. There's this kind of one, this, uh, I don't know what the right word is here, but like a cartoonish veneer that seems to accompany these types of games, and maybe it's endemic to whatever the, uh, the specific art tools that are used to create a lot of these more casual games. They often have this look where everything is very soft and there's not really much shading. Uh, the animation, I guess it looks kind of like Flash. Maybe that could be it. And there's nothing wrong with that if that is the case. Oh, we got a double jump, that could be useful. Uh, but yeah, that's something that, I don't know, I don't know if it pu puts me off to the style of game a little bit, but it just comes across as not being the most classy thing, and I I'm saying that really kind of in a gentle way, because I really, it's not a big deal, and it's just an aesthetic uh, critique that I find uh, to be a little less than palatable, but I don't expect that that's really going to put too many people off, and it's also for readability, like, because one of my criticisms is the typography in these types of games. They always are kind of like big and bubble letters with a lot of gradients on stuff. And I think that might just be for readability a lot of the time. Because that is important if you're uh, considering making a game for a mobile device. You're dealing with a less than optimal screen size. I mean, oh, come on. I meant to let him down, and of course he flies right into a hole. I guess we'll just do one more and then we'll wrap this up. But yeah, it is important to take... Uh, the best considerations possible when you're designing for a small screen. And especially to not have too many controls is also really important. So, you know, my criticisms as in, like, making him run and stuff like that, uh, take that with a grain of salt. That's more like if you decide to split this off and make a PC version as well, because I don't think it's going to really make a lot of sense to have multiple different controls on a possibly just a tap touchscreen uh, sort of format. And just the navigating the world alone and not falling into the pits can be enough of a challenge by itself. But then adding in the fact that you need to stomp on some guys and charge into other guys. Did I just get to... Oh no, he just bounced me. Yeah, uh, charge through some guys, jump on the other guys. Yeah, it works. I'm surprised somebody hasn't made like a knockoff Mario game like this where you have to like stomp on the Goombas and run through the turtles or something. That could be kind of funny. I'm sure there probably is something exactly like that out there somewhere, I just haven't seen it yet. The mobile gaming world, man, it's huge. It is absolutely massive, and I know very little about it. My experience in indie games has been very largely relegated to PC. And granted, yes, I have played a few mobile games, like I said at the start, but largely the more casual, mainstream types of stuff. Because there's not a lot of good ways to discover good mobile games that come from awesome indie developers, so th that's why I really don't mind helping out in the cases that I can, as long as I can get behind the game, because a lot of them feel really just like they're just a monetization device. And that has been a standard that I really try to keep with this channel in particular. Like, I know that eventually there will 
unfortunately end up being some ads on my videos, and that's just sort of a matter of practicality. I'm not super happy about it, but, you know, we gotta work with it. I mean, I kind of need to make a little bit of something off it eventually so I can use that, you know, if only just to help get games and stuff to, to further doing research on this, but that is not the way that I like to conduct my channel. I like to be, uh, you know, as high in the integrity department as I possibly can be. Um, but yeah, I don't really want to get behind games that are all about just ways to get a cheap buck out of people. And the same goes for how I like to market my channel. I don't really, you know, I don't beg for likes. I don't beg for subscriptions. Um, if you guys want to give me those, that's awesome, but I'm not about to ask for them. Even though I say this every single time, but just the fact of me pointing it out is, in a way, me doing that. I didn't intend for it to be. Sorry. We're getting pretty far this time, aren't we? Is this further than we got the other time that we did really well? I think I'm getting there. Fly! Oh, fly don't die. Oh, I'm dead. Alright, well that's gonna wrap this one up. Night Runner by Bitbreakers. Pretty cool. This is one that I would keep my eye out for if you're looking for a somewhat casual experience to pass a few minutes. And uh, something to keep your eye open for if you're looking for a decent mobile game. It's not out yet. I just checked the App Store right before, just to make sure, but didn't see it on there. And this was added to Game Jolt as of November 3rd, 2012. So... Oh, by the way, there's a music option. Music and sound you can turn on and off. It's kind of nice. So, there is our final record. You guys can jump in and see if you can beat my record. I can't remember if my first score was better than that. I think it was like 12 at the beginning. But Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. As always, remember to head on over to the website. If you don't mind, www.indie-impressions.com. Check out all the old and new videos. See if there's any that tickle your fancy. All those crazy flashing strobing lights and pretty colors. They're all there for you to find. And when you're done with the website, facebook.com slash indie impressions. Feel free to leave a like on that if you'd like to receive every day's new video delivered right into your Facebook feed. Of course, you're not required to. I just like to leave all the options open for you guys because I don't know how you use the internet. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And if you have any comments, questions, criticisms, or suggestions, or an indie dev and want to send me your game to check out on the channel, best way to reach me is at Rockley Smile on Twitter. And as always, these links are available right in the description, as well as this game link itself. And uh, there is a contact form, of course, also right on the website. So feel free to send me lots of emails. I've been getting tons of them lately. My backlog's getting big. I'm going to try and answer some emails after I'm done recording this, in fact. So if I don't respond to you right away, please don't be offended. I will get to it as soon as I can. So thank you, as always, for watching another episode. And please come back again tomorrow for another one. I will keep them coming as long as I can. We're up to like 271, two, something like that for this video. So we're getting pretty high up onto the uh, nearly the 300 mark. And then we'll be in the home stretch for an entire year of consecutive indie game coverage without missing a single day. I still can't believe that it's gone this fast. We're almost all the way back around to the beginning again. It's wild. But thank you as always for your support and for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Have a lovely night, guys. Take care. Later.